I don't think that people question the value of Q&I, but what some people question is the fact that you cannot get flows, network flows, uh, and see all the packet content uh, from AWS like you do from other network providers. Fortunately, uh, Microsoft has a methodology for using a packet broker and here's the documentation you can google this in the Microsoft documentation and here they explain uh, how that this can actually be done and here is the methodology to do so with uh, this particular Gigamon packet uh, broker well my good friend Todd Nihoff from IBM Security went ahead and implemented this in an Azure instance uh, I'm not going to go into the details you can follow the documentation that he did and he implemented that but what I'm going to be showing is how uh, what he put together is a complex attacks that allows us to see all the different places where Q&I adds value by getting those uh, network flows and, and the, the packet content of that right so we're going to see that uh, everything is going to start from this uh, user in here. This address that ends in 13. And the first thing that he's going to do is he's going to contact this URL who has a reputation for being malicious. And we'll see that when that network goes, again, there are no flows, there are no logs in here, only pure flows. Granted, you'll see in the offense that there are some logs, but those are the logs that things like DNS analyzer, and the custom rule engine generate as a consequence of the flows being received, the network flows with uh, each packet content. Now, so uh, we'll see that uh, the rules that are going to be firing in here detect uh, file hashes, suspect content, uh, th the user end up going into a calling a, a DGA, uh, then connects into a, a botnet command and control, uh, does a scan, we'll see how it, it, the scan is also detected, uh, goes to Google and does some FTP and uploads some data. I mean, uh, all these things are going to be showing, in, and I'm going to go in, in details in every one of those, the value of getting the entire network flows even from clouds like Azure now that you can do that by the way all the rules that are going to be working in here as well as the pickup that I replay to reproduce what Todd uh, did he recorded the pickup and he sent them to me I'm going to make them available in the there's going to be in, in the link in the video description of all my videos there's a link to a public box folder in it you're going to find a TODD folder for TOT and you'll find those there. So if we go into the offense that fire as a consequence of all these things, again all these uh, logs, in fact we can actually go there and, and group them and see that these are not logs that are generated by any log source sending them other than the things in QReader like uh, DNS analyzer uh, that that and the NTA that find things that are anomalous and those things that they do generate uh, logs and so this is pure value of the flow type of exercise so let's start with the displaying the actual rules that contributed to this offense and all these rules except for this one are part of uh, what Todd created. This is a rule that I also had in the uh, and because of this thing tripped into some malicious things it also fired. So everything started up with this particular offense where the user let me show I'm going to show the, every one of the offenses but again they, they are exportable importable I exported them uh, so you can see that if the domain name is actually found in any one of these 
reference set. And notice that in here, the, the X, uh, X feed, the, the advanced threat protection feed from the threat intelligence app kept these things updated. That's the important part of getting a good source of threat intelligence data that is well curated. So they're not going to give you uh, false positive. So because there was a domain name that the user went to, and that cooler, we're going to see it in, in, in a minute, but uh, and it was in here, this rule actually fired. So I put a filter here for any domain name that has uh, any of the word cooler. And if we click on any one of these, we can see that the domain name was actually extracted. And that's what that first rule actually fired. This next came these two rules that fired uh, actually from the same event. And notice that in here is this famous suspect content descriptor, things that are out of place. And in this particular case, is looking for this X4 closure script, that meaning that the guy, uh, without knowing it, downloaded a script that was actually executed as part of this attack. So this is one of the rules. Let's see the other one. It is this one. Uh, there is a file hash that is also included in my reference sets. Let's actually see those events in the network activity tab. So I look for any suspect uh, content descriptor that is not in A, that there's something there. And notice that other things were actually found, but we are not going to focus on those. Let's focus on the one that are in this scenario. The, the downloading of the suspicious file that has a script we can actually see and by the way when you see these things you can click on it and understand from the x-force what is the meaning of that right now, this is saying that this right now is low uh, it can be uh, I mean suspect doesn't mean that it is necessarily bad but as you can see in this case it, it was actually bad it's something that is out of place and that's what that uh, descriptor is, is also important. And notice that this can also help us understand why the, why the other rule also fire, because this also brings the hash. And this hash is in one of those uh, reference sets. Moving down, we see that the user, by running that script, accessed a domain name, which is a DGA. How does Curator knows that is a DGA? because of IBM DNS analyzer that received those network traffic, understood it, and detected what well, this is a domain generated name. And by the way, and I'm going to show you that in the network activity, this domain doesn't have to be a long one. There are tons of domain generated that avoid the detection of not being long, uh, that long. So let's actually see it in the network activity. By the way, something I forgot to mention, uh, when you see this source by destination by being zero, that's the way of uh, uh, QNI indicating that it, from the network traffic, it extracted some pieces and sent them as IP fix into QReader. And that's what the, the, the source and destination by is zero. And that's, that's an easy way of knowing that those things uh, came from there. Let's actually click on any one of these. And that is that domain name Believe it or not, is the DGA domain name and the DNS analyzer detected as such. And that's what that rule fired. Next, the user inadvertently connected to this uh, network. Let's actually see that network traffic in the network activity tab. And here it is, right? The connection to that, uh, that traffic. And notice that it's, it's even though it's detected, even though it is going on um, port four four three. And by the way, I forgot to show you the actual rule, and it's looking for the destination IP being in one of those reference set, and most likely it is the ones fed by the threat intelligence app where this thing was actually detected. Now the malicious actor perform a scan of the server network. And actually, this is a simple rule that uh, Todd created. And, you know, when you see four or 
you probably want to put some more here and four but uh, we see different combination of destination IP with different destination uh, port then that that's actually a port scan let's actually see it on the network activity tab so if we look at all the traffic that went to the server network we see uh, this uh, 2021 is an FTP that we will see later when the user was uh, transferring data but uh, you will see uh, especially here that there are different combination of source and destination IP that's actually an attempt to scan to see which ports if any of those ports were open and now we can see this uh, simple rule for detecting uh, FTP traffic right it's on the network uh, server network and it's on port 20 or 21 and the source byte is greater than zero so th and it has to be like that because uh, when when it performs a scan the scan will return zero so you don't want the rule to fire for a scan you want it to fire when the actual traffic went out also we can see that the network threat analytics which is the machine learning that sees you know what is it that is not uh, recognized or traffic that had been seen before uh, actually contributed here for that rule to fire now this rule as I said before this rule is part of my standard rule it's not part of this scenario but it also fired uh, but the next thing that we are going to see and actually this is the last is when data the user actually took data and did that FTP data from an internal server into Google Cloud Storage see the actual rule and this is interesting because it's it's looking that the SNI the TLS because this is encrypted traffic by the way but we'll see that the SNI uh, also allows us to search for and this regex is going to look for the Google API uh, communication let's see it in the network activity tab so here I'm doing a search for SNI being you know anything of the this uh, AP, I, a, the, the URL that we saw before and in here there we have it and notice that this is encrypted traffic as I said before and that's what you also get the JA3 hashes for identified traffic but we can let me see if I find uh, an instance in which we see how the SNI reveals that in spite of being over SSL the user went actually there example that, that's one of those uh, Google API's uh, IP's sorry and if we scroll down here yeah, this is actually encrypted but notice that the SNI reveals the presence on it and Q&I is capable of finding that out thank you Todd for putting this scenario together that I think exemplifies very well all the value that can be extracted when you can get the network traffic analyzed by Curator even when it is in an Azure environment.